stirred and stirred, it just will not, the ash and stuff just won't mix in, at least not much. You can see it's floating, it floats on the top. And so now we add glass. Someone said, well, maybe if you put glass in there, maybe that'll give it this nice uniform type orange glow. Added glass, melted that in there. Well, it's kind of fun. By the way, now we've got a long, this thing's getting hot, you know. <laughs> so we hooked a, uh, a long steel rod and, he, and my friend, uh, the, the young physicist, is holding the other end of this while Wes heats things up. So finally, we're ready to pour it out after about an hour, over an hour, as I remember. And now we'll look and see. Well, I guess I put punchline. Just see what you see there. Let's see. Still silvery. Still silvery as it comes out. Yeah. The stuff kind of falls out, but it's still silvery after all that work. So the conclusion I have after these experiments is. We invite NIST to show us how to make poured out aluminum acquire a, an orange glow. You know, this is a trick I would like to learn. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Okay. So what else could this orange glowing material be that flows out of the South Tower? Now this is just minutes now before the South Tower collapses. And furthermore, it's at a point on the corner there, it'll be the northwest uh, corner, if I think of it correctly. It's on the north face, certainly. Uh, this corner fails uh, just shortly after, minutes after then, the, this flow. And we also have this white ash coming off. Now, if you look at the thermite reaction, you, all, you have the white ash. Who knows what the white ash is? Aluminum oxide, Aluminum oxide is correct. And the uh, yellow, white hot material here is? Molten iron, right. So what's happening is we mix aluminum powder and iron oxide powder. These have to be mixed close together. And so the oxygen goes from the iron over to the aluminum to make aluminum oxide. And then we say the iron oxide is reduced. We get molten iron out of this chemical reaction. Now it's very exothermic, which means a lot of heat is released. Typically, the molten iron that comes out is uh, somewhere around 3,000 or hotter centigrade. Let's see, I'm trying to think. I, I, you know, around 2,500, 3,000 centigrade. What is that in Fahrenheit? It's four, hot, hot, white hot. <laughs> Fourth, uh, I could be nine fifth, uh, five ninths, and so on. But anyway, we'll forget that. It's, it's very hot. Uh, you add sulfur. I'm so used to thinking in centigrade, so I just do that. It's, uh, it's around 2,500 centigrade. We add sulfur to this before we set it off. Then there's sulfur mixed in with the molten iron. That allows this uh, sulfur iron mix, now molten, to cut through steel. And the analogy I used with uh, Alex in an interview was that now this eutectic, it's called this mixture, cuts through steel like a hot knife through butter. It's very effective and we actually did that. You just see, well, okay. I'll show you later where we cut through steel. Oh, we already saw the molten material. Let's go on. Okay, in fact, I'm gonna back up. Oop, 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 oop. Okay, let's back up one more. There. Okay, we have two pictures doing this. So, uh, the objection I had on this explanation was, someone said, well, if it's molten iron from thermite, how could it flow when it's orange hot? Now, orange hot is around 1100 centigrade, 1100 centigrade, but steel solidifies at 1538 is iron, solidifies. Yes, so it becomes solid. So, how are you going to have it be liquid? The answer is we added something to make it, the iron stay liquid even at the cooler temperature. What did we add? Sulfur, Sulfur. good. This is going to be important later. And there will be a quiz on it later too, so, <laughs> so be, pay attention. And here you see this experiment. We did this experiment last Thursday. I had done it once before, but uh, we, here we have oh, a couple feet now, this flowing material. So this is just from the thermite react, thermate actually, huh? And when you add sulfur, 
Then the term for this uh, reaction is thermate instead of thermite. So that's why we say thermate. Molten iron and sulfur flowing out then, and you can see, and what is the color? orange is right? It's yellow-orange. Right? That's the difference. And we prove that you can do that now and keep it flowing even when it gets down to this uh, cooler temperature. Now let me just show you. This is Wes Lifferth, a friend of mine, doing this. Let's see. Here we go. He sets it off. We're going to use something. Uh, see, see the sparks come, the ash, the white ash, and now he's going to pour out the residue and there it is. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. I will see that one more time. Let's see. Here's a, another. I like this photo. This is from a different camera. But look at as this molten stuff splashes. I, I had him pour it into a bowl, but it splashes out. See, it still stays liquid even down at uh, reddish temperature. It's quite, quite remarkable stuff. It's hard otherwise to melt iron, incidentally. Okay, so. Here's what. So what does it look more like, this poured out? Let's see. Well, let me see if I can stop the action here. For there we go. So I leave it to you to decide. This flowing orange colored material, yellow orange, as it flows out of the south tower with white ash drifting away, does it look more like liquid aluminum? Or does it look more like the residue, the molten iron and sulfur, and white ash uh, that we get from the thermate reaction. See, it's helpful to actually do experiments. Um, yeah, it really is. Thank you. I like that. Yeah. OK, now watch closely this. Uh, I'll show it again, but it takes <laughs> Another objection to, whoops, come back, you funny machine. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Another objection to our paper was, uh, to, to my paper, was this question of, can, okay, thermite then can melt. And some of you have seen the demonstration. I didn't put it in tonight, but where the ther thermite will actually cut away, cut through a, an engine block, cut right through an engine block. But here we're going to, so can you, that's vertical, just letting it drop. Can you cut horizontally? Yes, you, in fact, you can cut at any angle. And uh, this is now, uh, let's see, how do I get this? Here it comes. It's just kind of short, so you have to watch closely. Okay, here's a device which you can buy now. Now, that <laughs> goes fast. <laughs> See if I can get it one more time. Okay, so watch. It's over in a fraction of a second. Okay, what's happening is the thermite jets out from this cutter and cuts through a metal rod, as you can see, in a fraction of a second. These are for sale, for demolition purposes, and uh, they do exist, obviously. You saw the demonstration, and you can cut horizontally. I want to remind you, last year there were some fires in churches in Alabama, which we're all sad about. Uh, the gentlemen here are searching for accelerants, high temperature accelerants. And uh, what we understand from the news stories is that they did find that a high temperature accelerant thermite was mentioned in uh, at least one of the news reports that I saw about this. Um, this, when you find thermite residue in, after there's been a building fire, then you know that there, this is arson. Uh, thermite is not stored in buildings ordinarily. It's a <laughs> highly dangerous uh, substance. We call it the MSDS for this, the material science, something, the safety issues are horrendous with the store. However, by the way, you can buy this stuff on eBay. So, I mean, it's not like it's a secret. I had a fellow, as I was talking about, uh, I've been talking about thermite and thermate for over a year. Um, a fellow with, he said he had contacts with Homeland Security. He wrote to me and administrators at my previous university and warned me to stop talking about 
thermite. And uh, of course, that sort of whetted my appetite a little bit, but the fact is, but uh, it may have caused some problems down the road. 